Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, we will find out from where Avenue started building Vue.js. What we need to do? Travel back in time. Nine years um, from today, so it was 2013, when Avenue started building Vue.js and wrote the first lines of code. So we need to, we need to look for a specific repo on GitHub. Luckily for us, we, we don't need a DeLorean to travel back in time, but we have Git. So let's go into coding mode. And what we what you see here is the version 0.6.0, uh, which is the first type that haven't uh, pushed on GitHub. So you can find it under uh, this menu and not under branches, but you move to the touch tab to the touch tab and then you scroll all the way down, down, down. So up here so you need to find version 0.6.0 and when you click on here uh, you can see this uh, page uh, what we are looking for is the first commits so you click on order and order again so you need to actually uh, move way back to the first commit so let's scroll again down, down. You will find the link in the description where I point you directly to the first commit, so you don't have to do that. And actually, let's let's see how many commit did you do. So let me just copy the link from my notes, so we can go straight to the page we are looking for so let's give a second to my browser by checking uh, and then we will be redirected to github in a moment no way commits let's see why sorry for this block but that shouldn't happen. Hang on, guys. Again. It should redirect me straight to this page. I don't know why it did not uh, before. So the page we are looking for is this one. Uh, all the way back to the oldest commit. Uh, and the commit was the initial setup done on July 27, 2013. So if we look at the code, we will find out, we can browse the code at that point in time, and we will find that the folder structure is fairly simple. We have a bunch of, uh, of configuration files for, for Git, for gsint, for grunt, and some packages inside the package.json file. We want to install all the packages um, because uh, I have a copy locally, but uh, when we run npm install, we will see that many of the packages uh, in these uh, at this point in time are now deprecated. So um, I believe the actual first lines of code that Evan wrote, except the configuration files that we don't really care about for now, is in this test folder. So in here we have test of JS file where. Uh, there is a first test case. Uh, so um, uh, Evan is using the mocha library and in here they require um, statement at the beginning and the top it's used to import an element um, an element things from somewhere in source code probably and then it is saved onto this variable code element. Then the scrap function from the mocha library is called. Uh, and it's pro it is providing some content from some context for the actual test case. And then the hit function is called to write the actual test case using the set uh, and the equal um, method where it's checking if the element uh, is equal to one to three. Uh, so I believe this is the first uh, ever line of code that Evan wrote together with the code that you can find in the main folder under the SRC folder and in this file. So 
exporting a module and the module exported is just one sheet three. Uh, so this is just first the very first lines, but I believe the real magic is happening not here but in the second commit. So let's quickly go back to the commits page and look for the second commit. So the initial setup is obviously just a setup. So um, uh, what we need uh, to look for is to uh, find and figure out how the uh, first view implementation was written and how and understand how the mustache syntax actually works. To do that, as I said, we need to look at the second commit source code, which is this one that I have on VS Code here. So this is the early view core version. So there is an exploration uh, folder that wasn't there in the in the first commit, then the SRC, the test folder, and the bunch of configuration files. I think, as I said, the magic happened in this file. So exploration, uh, the explorations folder has this get set revitis style .html file where we can see the actual first uh, view application. Uh, you will probably recognize that uh, uh, this div with an ID of test uh, where it's appearing for the first time the double mustache syntax. Uh, so we know we know this today as the uh, div with an id of app or id of root uh, depending on what documentation you're reading uh, but this is the first view application and then we have the script section where the implementation of the first view application is actually taking place so um uh, let's go and look at the uh, view instance to figure out what's going on so if we open the script tag, uh, we can see that there is this function element that is defining two parameters. Remember, we are nine years back in time. It's 2013 and ES6 won't be a thing until 2015. So uh, this is how uh, back in time were defined classes. Uh, so this is the actual uh, first implementation of the view class that at the time was called element. Uh, so if we collapse this, you will see down here that the new, a new instance of the element class is called. We call this today new view, but at the time it was called new element. And then this, um, um, this object is uh, using the constructor to um, and accepts two parameters. The first one is a, a string with test in, here, in there, and then we have an object. We know this as the options object today, but at the time it just it was just a raw implementation of the uh, of the data. So this function element class is uh, accepting two uh, parameters. The first parameter is an ID of the uh, root element uh, from the markup that a view needs to monitor. Next, we have some initial data. Uh, what we need to look for is to figure out how the uh, how avenue uh, made this thing work so to um, to be able to mess up with the code i made a copy of this entire file and i moved everything inside this index.html file where i actually was playing around with it a bit earlier let me put it back as it was so i simplified the actual um uh, code that was inside this D1 idea test, removing some paragraphs and leaving only one paragraph with this double mustache syntax and the MSG um, variable. So let's figure out what's happening. Uh, so if we look at this um, section in the script tag, we can see that there is a, a variable defined just before the class declaration. So we see this variable binding mark uh, with a string assigned to it, data element binding. Uh, this will be used later as the data attribute for an, a, an element tag um, that will make the mustache syntax work. So if we look at the code, the first thing that you will notice is that I've put a console log just right here to figure out what this is actually referring to. And as you can guess, this is referring to, to the actual element object. 
So you see, we have uh, as a result on LAN8 in this element object right here. And it has already some data, uh, some properties in there, but because the uh, class has been instantiated and the instance is actually doing uh, its things um, in the code. So if we look at this, uh, Evan saved this into a, a different variable and then uh, it's using document get element by ID to select an ID, which is this parameter right here, and which is this uh, value down here. So it's selecting this actual, actually this element up here. Uh, so everything uh, that is selecting, so the DOM element, uh, the DOM node, uh, um, it's saved to a property called EL into this uh, new um, object, so the self object, and at the same time, it's saved to this um, property he had uh, of the object. Next, we have another property called bindings. Uh, this is an internal copy of the data uh, that will be uh, used by Evan as the actual data object. Uh, down here, you see that property called data uh, was defined and is the external interface, uh, which, is, which sets to the self object uh, a data property, which is equal to an empty object. Next, here we have the line of code that actually makes the um, double mustache syntax work. So um, it's creating a content variable, a property inside the object, um, which is um, using with the string replace method uh, with a regular expression uh, to make the double, the double mustache syntax work. So the first thing that we notice is that the replace uh, method is called. Uh, so um, uh, two parameters are given here. The first parameter is the it's a regular expression and then a callback function uh, that will uh, return some values that uh, are uh, later on saved to this content property of the um, of the main object. So if we look at the mark, uh, at this mark token. Um, method, we will see the um, implementation of the double mustache syntax. But first, let's grab this regular expression here and see what it does. So I've already uh, copied this in, uh, in this website, the regex 101, and uh, this is the actual um, regular expression. And down here we have the test string. As you see, we get two matches. The first is match is the word match uh, with the double uh, mustache syntax and the MSG um, variable in there. Next, we have the group selection, uh, so the group match, which actually contains this MSG variable. So the group capturing uh, is this uh, line of code down here in the regular expression. So this is uh, the group captured. Uh, so let's go back to the code page and see how this method was implemented so in between uh, this line of code and the actual function uh, to make the syntax work there is a bunch there are a bunch of uh, lines of code responsible for uh, the data binding that we maybe uh, have a, we will have a look maybe in the next video but for now our goal is to figure out how this syntax works. So as you see, I have a bunch of console logs inside here. So this mark token um, method is actually giving us access to uh, two parameters. The first parameter is the word match, which is this um, the entire match given by the regex. Next, we have the variable or the group captured, uh, which is this MSG variable. Uh, these two uh, parameters are um, available inside this uh, callback function and they are used by Evan uh, first here. Uh, so this is the first uh, thing that he does, uh, which means is uh, setting a new uh, property inside this binding object that I remember you. It's defined up here uh, and it's set to an empty object. Next, the actual uh, code that makes possible to the uh, binding mark to actually work 
and we will figure it out using this console log. So this function actually returns a, uh, a string with a span element that it's using the data attribute that was defined um, in the first line of code um, right here. So data element binding, and it's using the variable uh, property that is available inside this uh, method uh, to assign to this data um, a, to this data property a value. Uh, so let's look at the code. But first, let me uh, comment out these uh, these lines of code. So let's save these and let's look at the code. So let me refresh the page, and you will see the element that we logged into the console earlier. Then we have the um, uh, entire match, so the match variable, and then the variable. So these two are the variables that were defined inside the um, binding mark method. Next, we have this line 47, uh, which renders the span element. So this is what the actual function uh, is returning, um, and it's saving back inside the object. So this is how uh, Evan made the double syntax, double mustache syntax works. And as you see here, uh, the console log is used just to figure out what was inside this line, this thing here. So after that, there is the implementation of the binding um, that is used to make the actual uh, text appear inside the um, inside this code. But uh, what you will see is that this uh, paragraph will uh, be transformed into a paragraph with a span element that contains the actual uh, code that I showed you here. So this is how it works. If you like the video, um, leave me a comment, leave a, a thumb up and let me know. Um, we maybe uh, make more content like that in the future. Uh, probably I will go over the rest of this code in the next video and show you how have I made this data binding work uh, by inspecting this band function and the rest of the code that you see down here. Right, see you next. Uh, see you in the next video. Uh, take care, guys. Cheers.